Hey guys, in this chapter, in this section, we're going to be talking about functions. And a function is just a block of code that you can run at any specific time. So I'm going to create a new folder. And this is chapter 2, section 4. I'm going to create my index file. And I'm going to open it in my browser and in Notepad++. And I'm just going to paste my HTML. Okay, so that's good. So when you when you're creating functions, you usually either want to create them in an external JavaScript or in the head of your document, um, because when you do, when you're creating a function or declaring a function. Um, it's not outputting anything to the browser, so that should be done externally or in the head. So I'm going to put my script tags up here, and any output we have, we'll put in the body. So to create a function, you just want to write the word function, and then name it. So I'm going to create a function called say hello. Now you want to give it a name and then parentheses and then curly braces. And in here is what you want this function to do. So I'm going to make this very simple and we're just going to write out document.write. Um, we're going to write out hello. So that's, that's what this function does. It, it prints out hello to the screen. Now if we save that and reload, we get nothing. That's because all we've done is created the function. We're not running it. To run it, all you have to do is write say hello with the parentheses. Now if we reload, it's saying hello. And this is a function in its simplest form. We can also add parameters to a function, and we put the parameters inside of the curly braces, and then we can use those parameters in our function's body. So for instance, I'm going to change the name of this, and I'm going to call this function say it. Now you might notice that um, the second words, the second word of the function I'm capitalizing, that's a common practice in JavaScript, it's called camel case. You begin the function name with a lowercase and then each word after that will be will start with an uppercase so that's that's very common practice you could also use underscores like this um, but in JavaScript I prefer the camel case so I'm gonna say say it and then I'm gonna give it a parameter and that parameter is basically just a variable and I'm gonna call that word now instead of just printing out hello I want to print out whatever this word is going to be so I'm going to get rid of the hello string and put in the word variable so now when we want if we want to call this function first of all what it's going to do is print out whatever is typed in as a parameter so we can say say it and we can type a string or whatever an integer whatever we want in here so I'll say um, this is my function. So if we save that and reload, that gets printed out onto the screen. And you can have as many parameters as you want. Um, let's give you an example of that. We'll say word one, and then we want to separate our parameters with a comma. We'll say word two. So we'll write out word one, and we want to concatenate a space so we'll say plus and we'll have a string which is a space just a space and then plus word two so here we can input two different words we'll say hello and then again we want a, a comma to separate these and world if we save this, this is going to print out hello world. Now, what if we forget or we just don't add 
the second parameter if the function has a second parameter. So let's get rid of this second word, save it and reload, and we get hello undefined. And that's because we have two parameters, but we're only entering one. Now in some programming languages like PHP, we could have a default. We could say world one, uh, I'm sorry, word one equals world if that parameter is not inputted in the function. So if we save that and reload, that doesn't work in JavaScript, unfortunately. So we can still do, we can still create a default. It's just a little bit uh, trickier. So we can just say um, word2 equals word2. So we're saying the variable will equal whatever's here in word2. But if there's not or, um, then our default would be world. Okay, so let's add a semicolon and save that. Now if we re reload, we get hello world. And now if we still, we can still add a second parameter. Let's just say Brad. And if we save that and reload, then you can see that Brad overrides world because we put that in. So this is a good way not to mess up your code if the person for some reason forgets to put a, in a parameter, if you're a programmer or if it's coming from a form or whatever. So that's a good way to provide a default. So I'll run, I'll create a couple other functions uh, just to give you a better hang of it. Uh, let's create a function called add. And we want to put in, we'll say num1 and num2. So what we want this function to do is simply add num1 and num2. So we can say, uh, actually we'll say sum equals num1 plus num2. All right, and down here, let's say add, let's say five and five. So if we save that and reload, we get nothing. Now the reason we're getting nothing is we're not we're not returning anything or printing anything out from this function. Um, so what we need to do is return a value. And what we want to return is the sum. That's what we want displayed. So we need to say return sum. And if we save that and reload, we still get nothing. That's because just simply returning it isn't going to print it out. So we need to if we're not going to use document.write up here, then we need to use it here. So we'll say document.write add 5 and 5. So now we get our 10. Now we, you notice we put in, we didn't use print um, quotes because these are integers. If these were strings, and let's just do that just to see what happens. And we reload, we get 55 because they're now strings, so they're simply just going to be tacked on to each other. They're not going to be actually added. So that's as far as I want to go in this section because in the next section when we do events, um, we'll also be dealing with functions. We're going to look at how we can run a function by simply clicking a button or a link um, or even just on the, on the page load have it run automatically. So that's it for this section. I will see you in the next.